Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This is an Epson Workforce WF2860, which we will be taking apart today. The reason I do disassembly videos is to show everyone how printers are assembled, how to get to a certain part, because a lot of you want to repair your printer, and sometimes it is very hard to figure out where the part is located. Is it hard to get to a certain part or simple? So that's the goal of my video today, and I hope you enjoy it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. The tools that we will be using are Phillips head screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver. The first thing I like to do is unlock this carrier before I get started so it's off. When the printer is just being turned on or if it's printing something, uh, this unlocks and I would unplug the printer and have that there. And also, let's go ahead and remove the paper. Unplug the printer, of course. Put the printer on its side to remove this tray. What you'll need to do is just press these tabs right here, just like so, or the paper tray on the bottom here. Now we have this uh, paper pickup roller uh, to remove that one. We'll just need to lift it up a little bit and then release this latch right here, kind of push it that way. That lets us get the roller into this position and then it's removed very easily. So this is the latch that you'll just need to pull back to install it. Just pull it in, lift the latch, and you have it in place. Since we're here, let's go ahead and remove this paper output tray. So for that, we'll just need a flathead screwdriver. We're going to press right here. And also on this side, push this in. There we go. That releases the paper output tray. This is the back of the printer. This is the duplex cover for the duplex unit. You can just go ahead and remove it. This is our maintenance box. To get to it, we're just going to go ahead and unscrew this screw right here. I'm using a flathead screwdriver for that. And let's go ahead and push this back. Like so. There we go. And now we can go ahead and remove the maintenance box. Very simple. Now let's get the document feeder trays. So this tray you can just push in the middle and push to one side to remove it. In order to remove this top cover, we're going to have to disconnect the cord on the side after we remove the side panels and then remove the top. So let's just go ahead and move to our side panels here. So go ahead and open the top cover. We're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove a few screws. So one right here. There's one on the bottom right there. Go ahead and put this down. Now what we'll do now is just put a flathead screwdriver and gently kind of pull this back. As we try to pull it towards the back, it slides over and it releases that way. This is where we have the power supply, and this is the fax card, and the main board is located right there. So let's go ahead and remove the other panel. One screw right there. This one we already removed with the maintenance box. Let's see what we have on the bottom. Similar concept, you're just pulling this back and releasing it, just like so. Now let's go ahead and remove this whole top portion, including ADF and the scanner. So go over here. On this side you will find the arm that holds the top. We need to remove two screws from it. 
And here's the second one right there. Now all we need to do is just push it to the right. And let's go over here and remove this screw right here. And that should release the top cover for us. We can just go ahead and slide this over. And that should release the top cover right there, but it's still connected with the wires on this side. Okay, since we have this released from the hinges, I'm just going to place it against the wall here and remove this panel in order to get to the main board that's right over here and disconnect the wires. To remove this panel right here, there is a screw like right behind these little wires. So that screw on the right side needs to be removed. And there's actually no screw here, it's just a clip. And that gives us access to the main board. Let's go ahead and disconnect this top portion so we can get rid of that. Just going to... So here it is, plugged in right into the main board. So just you pull on it, and that's how you would be putting it back, is just inserting that right there. Now, there's this wire right here. That we just need to pull on and remove so three wires that need to be disconnected in order to get this top portion that includes the ADF and the scanner power supply right here just remove the screw I removed a little earlier right there there's another screw on the bottom okay now we can remove the power supply just untangle all these wires and disconnects right there so this is your power supply for the WF2860. The part number is this one right here, 219-5633-01. That's for US and Canada regions. Okay, the fax card. You can just remove this screw right here. That releases that. And it is also connected to the main board over here. Just go ahead and disconnect it. Some more things. This is the print head connection over here. If you ever need that checked, the print head just also slides in there. There's no clamp on any of these. This is for the motor, possibly. Some more connections right there. All right, this. You can see this is the main board has the Wi-Fi wi card on there or the wireless board on there. I'm just going to go ahead and disconnect all cords or wires. Let's remove this little plate here. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get all the screws. So one over here, one here. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this plastic piece. So we got the two screws right here a little earlier. Um, and then two more right there. Okay, let's go ahead and remove it. Gives us a better access to the main board. Let's see if we have more screws holding the board somewhere. There's a screw right here. I bet you found the screw earlier than I did. <laughs> so now, basically, three screws that um, we're holding this board. Keep in mind there are some connections on this side, so go ahead and remove those. So just one wire was connected right here on that side. And here it is. The wireless board right here connected directly to the main board. And just pull it out. There you go. This is your part number right here on the sticker. So on the paper sticker is where you would be looking for the part number. This is the paper sticker. 
219-2813-15 does not matter. It's just the seven first digits. These are the timing encoder sensors right here. And this is the control panel. Let's get that out. That actually can be removed without all this hassle. So we have a screw right there. There's a couple right over here. So right in this hole. And another one in here. I believe this is this plastic piece. There we go. Now you can just remove these two screws right here. Our control panel is already disconnected from the main board. But the wire loops all the way around, kind of over here underneath. And let's see if we can get it. Yeah, so it's right here on the bottom. Uh, it's it. You can reach in there and get it out. So let's go ahead and do that. So just push this through. It's kind of like put in with adhesive. Okay, and we have our cord out. Let's remove the two on this side. I'm not being too careful. I'm not planning on putting this one together, but definitely want to be careful not to lose any screws inside. They're going to interfere with your printing. Then there's a ground wire, and the ground wire is connected over here. Okay. This is our control panel. This is the timing strip that runs in the back of the carrier unit. Let's go ahead and remove that and take a look at it. So if you're having, uh, usually if it's making vertical lines on, on your prints, it's because this is dirty somewhere along the line and you'll see it, like maybe an ink spot or something on here. That's preventing the sensor from reading it correctly. Or if it's ripped or out of the sensor, the carrier will just move with a loud noise, like bang, and then uh, it'll give you an error. So it, it cannot, the printer cannot work if this is out. That's what one side looks like. Put the spring in a hook. And this one just attaches to the hook on the printer. The part number is actually on here. It's very tiny. But I've noticed most of the uh, Epson's or HP will have a part number on there. So I assume it would be that one, 1750924 for the encoder strip. Let's go ahead and remove the print head. And I think that's going to be the last part that we remove. We're going to use a bit thinner Phillips head screwdriver. So if the, ones that you, the one that you've been using is not working on this screw right here, then just get a different one. Let's go ahead and remove this little plastic piece right here that will release our wires. We're going to press right over here to push this up. So you're going to press from this side and release this little plastic piece. Then we need to remove this little plastic piece. Okay. So this is one of the latches right here and then it's released on top. Now we can disconnect on the side over here. We need to disconnect this board. So we need to disconnect the wire right here. Goes right into here. So we have that disconnected. Okay, so the this board release buttons are uh, right over here. So on this side is behind the wires. And just go ahead and it's gonna be right above here just gonna press right there and that should pop it off on this side on this side it's right above here so you're just gonna press on top of this little thing here and that releases this board so now we released this board uh, or the yeah, contact board right here. 
now we have access to the printhead. And we removed one screw a little bit earlier, and this there's two more. There's one. There's the second one. We actually have to remove this little plastic piece right here too. It just pulls back like so. And now we can go ahead and remove it. Uh, just pull it straight up. Kind of like that. And after we removed it, you can remove this wire. And this is our printhead for 2860. This is not a part number. This is a serial number. I've never seen a part number anywhere on this uh, printhead or any Epson printhead. Not sure if this number here has anything to do with the part number. It might. I haven't checked that. But yeah, this sticker is not going to be a part number. Almost fully disassembled. You just have this plastic housing. You probably don't need to replace that, but if anything, it's just a couple screws right there. A carrier can be removed also if you need to go that far. But this is as far as we'll go. I hope you were able to learn something or just explore the printer with me. In any case, please don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel, and have yourself a great day.